people at not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Hey, you know what they're saying? Hey, just choose the way of truth. Just set the judgments of God before you. Just fall in love with that book. Fall in love with the Savior. Amen. And just watch Him begin to repair and bless and mold everything on that potter's wheel in your life, amen, before it becomes a vessel of meat for the master's own use. And say, Lord, it's been on the potter's wheel for a while. Here it is, Lord. I pray that you'd paint it and that you'd just bake it. Make it solid, amen, and fill it up, Lord God. Fill it up. Here you go, Lord. Here, here am I, Lord. Send me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Back to our text, and I think, I think we'll be done, amen. I think we've preached enough here today. But there's a lot of other uh, verses. Maybe we'll go to one more. But many false prophets that come shall rise and deceive many. Matthew 24, 11. Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets which come in with sheep's clothing and inwardly they are raveling wolves. Um, 2 Peter chapter 2, it goes on, goes on. It says, but there were also false prophets among the people, even as there shall also be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. Amen. And bring to themselves swift destruction. It goes on and goes on and goes on. Amen. In uh, 1 Timothy 4, 1, it says, The Spirit speaketh especially that in the last days... Um, uh, the Spirit speaketh especially that... I say, I charge you therefore before... No, back to 1 Timothy. There we go. The Spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Amen? So instead of speaking the truth and love today, you got people giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Why? Is they can't tell the difference between the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Antichrist. They don't really know the difference between uh, a real preacher and a sheep, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Amen. you got to know this book to be able to know what you're looking at and what you're dealing with. Amen. Uh, so all I want to accomplish here really today is to say this. There are great treasures and great power accessible to you from the Word of God. And I encourage you today to fall in love with this book like you never have before and come before the Lord and say, Lord, I want to be able to know the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Amen? Everything else will fall into, into place at that point. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll be this message. Lord God, I thank you so much for your word. Father, you've been so good to us. Thank you again, Lord, for blessing your preaching. I pray, Lord God, I pray, Lord, that you'd bless your people. Uh, Lord, that that book would come alive to them. Lord, that they'd believe that King James Bible, Lord, and know that you've put your hand on it. Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you. I pray, Lord, that you'd have fruit, that you'd uh, have increase, Lord, in what you've invested in. Uh, Lord, because you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Alright, recording. First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. We're going to take a look today about something. And um, my prayer today is that, um, this is what I prayed, amen, today and last night. I said, uh, Lord, I, I hope that um, you'll bless your word and that uh, everybody that's here to hear it, that they will get more of a love for your word and know why they need to study to show themselves approved unto God. And be able to know the Word of God. Amen? Uh, without the Word of God, if we don't know that we know that we know that we know what it says. Not what it means, but what it says. If we can't open up this book and say, I believe this because it's written right here. Then you can be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Amen? And that's what the devil seeks to do today. Amen? If you look in the Bible after the cross, the devil become very religious. Amen? And uh, we'll take a look at that here in a minute. But actually, let me read it here real quick. Uh, the devil's ministry right now is deception for the church. You see, before the Lord Jesus Christ came, you see a lot of times that the devil was trying to destroy uh, the Jewish seed because he knew back there in Genesis chapter 3 
that that seed of the woman was going to come and was going to break his head and bruise his heel in the process. Amen? And so he was trying to get rid of that seed. You see, in, um, back there in, in the book of Exodus, when the Pharaoh uh, commanded all of them to take their kids and throw them in the river, all the male kids, you know what Satan was trying to do? Amen? He was trying to get rid of that seed before the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, the Messiah would come. Later on, you see with Herod, what did they do when they heard about it? Hey, Daniel's, you know what I mean? What Daniel said, amen, that uh, the Messiah is going to be cut off. It's, it's coming right here, really. Okay, so what did he do? He went and killed everybody from two and under. He's trying to get rid of that seed. Amen? But after the cross, he said, all right. Hey, no man could do that. That was obviously what was prophesied was going to happen. Amen? The keys of death and hell were just stripped away from me. He looked all the devils of hell in the face. Amen? Darkness came over the world. Amen? While sin, while Jesus Christ becomes sin on the cross. Amen? He, he, they were unsure at first. He was trying them in the garden. He's like, look, I'll give you all these things if you'll just bow and worship me. They're like, nah, man, nobody could have overcome that temptation. By this time, they were sure. They're the last desperate attempt. Well, come down off the cross and we will believe you. Appealing towards pride and love at the same time. Come down off the cross and we'll believe you if thou be the Christ. Amen. But the Lord said, no. Nah. Amen. The Lord promised, amen. He said, he said I'm, I'm going to set my face like flint. I'm going to come down there. I'm going to look the devil in the face. Amen. I'm going to fulfill every prophecy that was ever prophesied. I'm going to fulfill every prophecy that I didn't feel like writing in the Bible even. Amen. Hey, if he didn't write it in the Bible, let me tell you something. He fulfilled it exactly the way he wanted to. <laughs> Amen. The Lord was in control on that cross. Men didn't murder him. Amen. He said, therefore, doth the Father love me because I lay down my life for the sheep. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Amen? And the Bible says over there in Ecclesiastes that there is no man that hath power in the day of death. And there's no discharge in this war. Amen? There's no man that can say, hey, you can't just by willpower say I'm going to die. And you surely can't by willpower say, I'm going to rise again. Amen? But that's what the Lord did. He, he uh, set His face like flint. The Bible says this, that the Lord God will help me, therefore, in Isaiah 50, verse 7, therefore I shall not be confounded, therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. We shouldn't be ashamed either, amen? He wasn't ashamed to be numbered amongst the transgressors, amen? He said, you ain't, you ain't going to defeat me. So I'm going to set my face like a flint. He is near, it says, that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. I mean, who, who can do that except for the Lord, man? <laughs> He's going to go to the cross. He's going to call the devil himself out. I know there's some charismatics they want to joke around and think they're going to charge hell with a squirt gun. Well, let me tell you something. The devil's sitting there laughing at him. He doesn't even accept the challenge. They'll be lucky if he sends a little lamp back. Amen. But the Lord, he said, let him come on to me. Who is mine adversary? Death, hell, sin, destruction. What is it? I'll look at it in the face. I'll set my face like a flint. I will not flint. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what he did. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they, sh they shall all wax old like a garment, and the moth shall eat them up. My, my, my. Amen. You, you can't mess with the Lord, amen. After the cross, amen, the devil become very religious. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, Paul says this, For I am jealous over you, verse 2, with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband 
that I might present you a chaste virgin to Christ. For I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. For as he that cometh preacheth, hold on here, watch this, another Jesus, or whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, whom we have not received, or another gospel, you might, uh, which ye have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Amen? So Paul's speaking of another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel that's going to come in, and it's going to be preached by the same method, amen, of exactly what went on right here, like the serpent did in the garden. You know what he said? Yea. Hath God said? Amen? How about that? A master strategist. The devil himself takes one. He's got like two strategies that he uses to deceive the whole world. Drag millions of people down into hell. And that's, yea, hath God said? And the lust of the eyes, the, uh, the pride of life, and um, the lust of the flesh. You see him. He's got like four strategies that they work every time. Amen. A little bit further down, we see verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers be transformed unto the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Amen? So uh, now we'll actually turn to 1 John chapter 4. Amen? And we're going to take a look at something that the Bible tells us to be able to do. But there are false apostles. Um, Satan's not going to come up in a pitchfork, you know, in a red suit, and sit there and, and try to offer you something. He's going to show up as an angel of light. He's going to show up as a minister of righteousness. He's going to appear righteous. He's going to sound good. I mean, when you hear what the devil has to say, you might well bear with him. Just like Paul said back there. He said, I fear that you might well bear with him. Amen. The only way that you can escape the deception of the devil when it comes down to it, the only way that you're going to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, is that you know what this book says, you believe what this book says, and if the devil himself shows up as a seducing spirit with doctrines of devils, amen, as a minister of righteousness, you're going to sit there, you're going to see his slithering little forked tongue, amen, you're going to know it for what it says. Why? Because it's written. I know what the book says, amen. I got into it. I, I understand stand the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of air. And the spirit of truth and the spirit of air has always been there and it will always be here. Amen. Until the Lord comes back. Amen. And he binds that devil and he throws him down there. Amen. And he, then he lets him loose another uh, after a thousand years. Amen. And then finally burns the whole sin cursed thing up and starts it over new in a new heaven and a new earth where no sin has ever touched it. Where no devil will ever walk. Amen. And we will still always deal with the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. We, when you are a Christian, amen, you're in the evil present world, amen, and there is a battle going on right now, and the battle is for your mind and for your heart. Amen. God created man out of the dust of the earth. Satan at one time, amen, he said, he said, oh, I am going to ascend up above the throne of God. I will, I will, I will, I will. And the Lord cast them down. Amen. He used to be the anointed cherub that covereth over the throne of God. It speaks of, of his, him being made out of jewels. Amen. That were beautiful. Can you imagine the light of God's throne shining through Lucifer, the light bearer? 
and his pipes being perfect from his creation. Speaking of, of a musical instrument, can you imagine the angels of heaven singing amen and coming and this light and this music reflecting through the anointed cherub that covereth above the throne? That was Satan, amen. He's not just some archangel, amen, with wings like the movies try to make him. Amen. Now, he gets cast out. God doesn't destroy him. But he says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make man out of the dust of the earth. You're going to be called Satan. They're going to be made in my like and image something you never were. Something you'll never attain to. You can't do anything you understand I am the Lord God. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make you a dust-eating serpent. So I'm going to take dust, make it something you can never be, and I'm going to take you as the, as the most powerful created being in the universe, and I'm going to cast you down and put you on display, and now you're going to go around trying to eat dust for the rest of your life. So you got Satan, amen, with an animosity. Man, what's going on here? You're going to take dust, make it in your image? So he goes around and he wants to try to make, turn that thing around and try to make man conform into his image. Try to make man try to become his own God. Try to make man what the devil could have never been. Ain't that a master deceiver? You know what? The only thing that will keep you back from him getting what he wants and you being conformed into the image of Satan instead of the image of God. The only thing that would keep you back from becoming a living blasphemy instead of a living sacrifice like you should be before the Lord is this book and knowing this book. The Lord said that if you abide in me and my words in you, you shall ask the Father what you will, it shall be given you. Amen? It's all about the Word of God. The Bible says that um, when you receive the Word of God, you received it as it was not the Word of men, but it was in Word Check this out. It says, And you know how we have exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father does his children, that you would walk worthy of God, who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, you, which you heard of us, you received it as it not the word of men, but as it in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh in you that believe. The only thing that can keep you back, amen, from being deceived from the devil is to know the Word of God. And I'm not just trying to say that you just say, okay, yeah, I believe the book, but you know why you believe it, and you know what you believe. And you can pick up that book and you can say, this is what I believe and why I believe it. You say, preacher, I can't do that. That's fine. Amen. That's why we're here. Amen. You know what? It, it, your preacher will probably fall over backwards and, and, and almost have a heart attack. Amen. And someone came to him and said, Hey, preacher, I heard about this doctrine. Where is it at in the Bible? Can you show me? I want to be able to know where it's at so that I can be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You see, because when you stand against false doctrine and you stand against false prophets, you're standing against the devil. Amen? The devil's not the one starting the bars. Amen? The devil's not the one getting people strung out on crack cocaine. That's all the flesh. Amen? That's all men trying to control things and make a buck and all that type of stuff. That's all the flesh. The devil's the one trying to get people to come to church for years and years and years and claim to believe in Jesus and read that Bible but not understand it and still be lost and still end up in hell. The devil's the one starting churches, amen, that, are, that ain't got no doctrine and are teaching people to be practical Satanists. Amen. That's the devil. Amen. So when we understand that and we recognize that, we know where it's at in the Word and we can stand against it, you know what we're actually doing? We're strong in the Lord and the power of His might, and we're standing against the wiles of the devil. We're wrestling then against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen? And only then. Amen? It's all about knowing this Word right here. Amen? Right here it says in uh, 1 John chapter 4, looks like we'll finally get there. Amen? Beloved, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, rather they are of God, because many false prophets are gone into the world. Hereby we know the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ 
is come in the flesh is of God. So that's one way that you can know. Amen? Uh, keep going. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of what? Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come and even now already is it in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that uh, is not of God heareth not us. Uh, hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Amen. You see, so there's that spirit of Antichrist, amen, and those false prophets in this world. Amen. We need to be able to recognize that. Is this the spirit of truth or is this the spirit of error? I just thought of a reference right there when I heard that. Um, therefore, you know, he that heareth us not part. And um, Jesus said that over here when he was dealing with some devils face to face, amen, some Pharisees, some religious people that were trying to tell the Lord something. And he says this in uh, John chapter 8, verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He says, and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Now how about that? So why can't these people hear this thing? Why can't they understand what I'm trying to tell them? I know that they're deceived and they're in error, but why can't they understand it? Well, they got the wrong spirit in them. There's no truth in them. Amen. You know, there's some people, amen, you ain't going to be able to convince anything to. It's going to take the Lord to grant them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, just like it says over here in the book of Timothy. They can't hear. They don't have ears to hear. And I tell you if, you, if you love the Lord, if you're saved today, and you have a desire for His Word, you ought to be very, very thankful because you can resist the truth to such a point that you're going to be like what I'm going to read right now. And uh, God doesn't have to grant you repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Uh, if you want to reject God's Word and reject God's Word, He can say, all right, fine. I ain't going to let you hear it. But peradventure, somebody who has the Word of God can be able to stand up against that hardness and that deception where the devil has snared them. Look at this, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, we'll start in verse 24. And it says, The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves if preventure God will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil whom are taken captive by him at his will how about that amen so what you what he's telling Timothy to be able to do is to be able to stand up against the devil amen he said, don't be outsmarted by them. Don't let them start these little strives and everything like that. Just put the Word of God out there. Amen. And if preventure, God will grant them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Amen. Don't get discouraged if you got people who are lost that won't hear you. Just keep praying. Keep putting it out there. Be meek. Be patient. Amen. And preventure, God will, grant, will give them repentance. But check it out. If they don't want the truth, if they don't want to know it, it, says, it doesn't say that He'll make them repent to the acknowledging of the truth. It says He'll give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth that they may recover themselves from the snare of the devil whom are taken captive by Him at His will. Amen? 
And that goes either way for someone that you're trying to reach, a lost person, amen, in your family or someone you know, a friend, amen, that won't receive it. And it goes on in the church house also, amen. If you have a preconceived notion about what this Bible says and the preacher's putting something out there, amen, you got to want to know it. Amen. You got to want to know that truth. You got there's got to be something inside of you that says, "Let God be true and every man a liar." And I want to know what the Bible says, not what I think what it says. Amen. And by the way, don't just take the preacher for every word that he says. You got to be able to pick up this book, study it out. Amen. And if we preach something that's not quite right, amen, we'll not be offended one bit. If you take some notes and come back and say. Is this what you said? Am I understanding this right? Because it seems like maybe because of this verse that that's not true. Hey, man, that's that's good stuff right there. That's that's what I'm talking about. That's somebody, amen, that wants to know the truth. That's somebody that says, hey, I want to know what this book says. Make sure that I'm not deceived at all. One bit. Amen. I want to be fit for the master's use. Amen. I want to know what's the spirit of truth and what's the spirit of error. I want to know. If this person's a false prophet or if he's a real preacher. Amen? That's good. That's where it starts. Amen? Check the preacher out. Check Brother Matt out. Check Brother Moss out. Check the people on the internet out. Amen? If what they're saying ain't lining up with the Bible, amen, and you mark that person. Say, hey, that person is a false apostle. That person is a false prophet. Amen? I ain't need to hear the leaven poison that's going to come out of their mouth because I'm this word amen is beginning to open up the eyes of my understanding and I'm comprehending what is the breadth and length and depth and height and I know what I'm hearing and I know what I'm seeing and I know now that you're a devil I couldn't see it before but I got in the word now and it's becoming very apparent amen amen a little bit of light nothing like a little bit of light amen to be able to show you what really is in the dark Amen. Light always exposes the darkness. Amen. And I tell you what, you begin shining light, amen, on some people that are full of the devil and they're in the snare of the devil and they're trying to lie at you, amen, and you just watch those little horns pop out. You watch their little remarks. Amen. They'll, they'll have some sharp ones, man. I tell you what, the devil will give them an ability to be able to turn around what you said and make you guilty of it. What they just did, you'll be guilty of it. You're like, what? Hold on. What's going on here? Oh, wait. Yeah, that's right. I remember Brother Matt was preaching that that one time, and he deals with devils all the time. And that, that's how I know that person got a devil in them. I mean, that is a masterful piece of work. And I know that it's a lying spirit every time when I'm sitting there exposing something to somebody, and they turn it completely, perfectly around to where everybody around would say, yeah, you're guilty of that. What? Hold on. I was the one exposing you. What happened here? You come to face to face with a lying spirit, amen. They know what they're doing. They've been deceiving people for thousands of years, amen. You ain't even been alive for a hundred. That's what happened, amen. But God will give you words, amen, and a mouth that your that your adversaries cannot gain say against, amen. They can't withstand it, amen. Um, the closer you get to the Lord, the more you're in the battle, the better, amen, you'll be able to do it. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says this, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, and rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. So we'll be taking a look at that truth right there. Now, if you can rightly divide it, you can wrongly divide it. Why are there so many different denominations? Why is there this type of Baptist and that type of Baptist, hard shell Baptist, Primitive Baptist, Reformed Baptist, Southern Baptist, Independent Baptist. Wait, I mean, I'm just talking about Baptists. And then there's Calvinists. Then there's the Charismatics. Then there's Pentecostals. Then there's Church of Christ. There's Church of God. What is, why? Why is there so much confusion out here? I tell you right there, because they have not learned how to divide the Word of God up right. All right? Now, there is a way of over-dividing the Word of God. But don't worry about that right now, amen. If you start over-dividing the Word of God, at least you're dividing. Amen. The Lord the Lord will smooth that thing out a little bit later on and balance you. Amen. Uh, some preachers, they say, man, it's a lot easier um, to cool down a, f a fanatic than it is to warm up a corpse. Amen. 
So, you know, just get in there, amen. If you get your nose bloodied from the devil a little bit, that's okay. Just get back in the word, amen. Keep standing for the truth. But if people didn't have a preconceived notion of what the Bible says, and they kept it in context, and they rightly divided it, they would come to pretty much, they would come to a 90% agreement on the Bible. Now, there's a 10% error of prophecy and stuff like that that's not concrete, all right? But there's a lot of doctrines in this Bible that you can know for sure. This is the truth of what the Bible says about that, and that's written to me, all right? So basically, you got where dividing up the Word of God, you got three groups of people it talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, and it mentions um, Jew, Gentile, and the Church of God. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, or it might be 32. And it talks about, give neither offense unto Jew, nor Gentile, nor the church of God. So first off, when you're dividing the word of God, you got to say, okay, who am I? Or who am I talking to? Is this a Jew or a Gentile? Or is it a church member? Real simple. So who's it written to? A Jew, a Gentile, or a church member? All right. Now then... You, the Bible is the greatest historical document in all the world. So one, you got this a historical document. Uh, next, it's a doctrinal statement. All right? So it can be divided historically or doctrinally. However, there are other things that may not be written doctrinally to you as a Gentile in the church age that you can le learn from. And so we say that you can apply that inspirationally or practically. All right, so I can learn practically from this. Like, for instance, he says, hey, if, thy eye, if, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. For it's better to go into heaven with one eye than into hellfire with both of your eyes. Now, if we took that doctrinally today, next time I walk to Walmart, and I see some woman dressed up, amen, like some kind of uh, little slut, I'm like, oh, wow, man, now I have to pluck my eye out. So obviously this is not doctrine for us today, but the Lord is speaking of what will be doctrine in the millennial reign of Christ. Okay? So anyways, there's ways of being able to divide that Bible. There's things, the promises that are written and promised to the Jewish people that are not promised to us as Gentiles in the church age. Okay? Does that make sense? So for instance... Uh, the Charismatics talk a lot about they go to all these promises. They go to Deuteronomy 28, claim it, claim it, claim it, name it, claim it, name it, claim it, claim it, claim it. All the promises, the promises, yeah, 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 we're Israel, da, 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 da. And so then they begin taking all these things that are written doctrinally to the Jew and applying them to themselves in the church age. And that's where you get messed up. Amen? So when you don't divide up the Bible right, uh, then it's easy to be able to be deceived. But if you just believe it says what it means, it means what it says, you keep it in context, you know what's written to who, you know if it's a historical statement or if it's a doctrinal statement, or I can only learn from it practically, then you begin to get a solid foundation of which you can study the Word of God. Amen? So that studying to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. See, you see that? So it takes work. Amen? to study it and to look into it and to dig it uh, as, as searching for hid treasure. But when you find it, when you find it, hey, this is true. This is what the Bible says, man. It will change the way that you walk. And you know what? You won't be ashamed anymore. You won't have to say, well, I don't know if what they're saying is true or not. I mean, I, I, I think I feel like it, it was okay, but I just don't know. Amen. You won't be ashamed. You'll stand before God one day, amen, having known what you were supposed to be as a Christian, having known who He was as God, amen, and you won't be ashamed. You stand before Him in confidence, knowing well, why you're doing what you're doing, amen, and what it is. You'll be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, it says in Ephesians, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God, amen. Um, now unto him is able to do a seeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us 
Unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. And how about that? It says that He is able to do it in us. And it says right here that uh, Jesus said in John 14, it says, And I will pray to the Father that He will give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth Him not, neither knoweth Him. But ye know Him, for He dwelleth with you and shall be with you. In John 16, he says, How be it when the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you into all truth. And He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak. And He will show you things to come. How about that? Amen? The Lord, uh, according to the power that worketh in us. Amen? To be able to, to know what is the breadth and length and depth and height. I mean, it's inside of us. We've got the Holy Spirit of God. This book... Amen is, is a living book with all truth in it. Amen. And the Lord will help you to be able to understand that. It, but you've got to get that desire inside of you that I really want to know what it says and why it says it. Amen. And I'm telling you right now that when the Lord begins to see that, and when you, when you don't just keep it covered up, but you begin to let that thing water and grow, amen, you'll get a desire and a thirst for the word of God, amen, and to know the Lord and the scriptures like you've never had before, and the Lord to look down there and say, hey, how about that? That power that worketh in us, and that, and that my child, amen, is beginning to grow. Amen. And you'll send increase upon it, and you'll begin to be fruitful, amen, and that, and that fruit will start out small, but then it'll grow, amen. Eventually you got enough fruit, amen, that you can be able to help other people with it, amen. Enough fruit to go around. Amen. Hey, you get filled up, amen. It'll be like that cup. My cup runneth over, amen. Surely goodness and mercy, amen. My cup runneth over, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm glad today, amen, to say, hey, Brother Matt, you preach, amen, and it seems uh, it seems like maybe sometimes the Lord moves, amen. It seems like you know a lot of Bible. You know what all it is, amen, is I just got in that word, amen, and God began to send increase upon it, and that fruit began to grow, amen. Those those fountains of living water, they weren't quenched anymore, amen. They were allowed to just, just continue to do their thing, amen, and you know what it did? It just said, hey, amen, Lord, I'm going to follow you, and it just began overflowing, amen, and began going on to other people. Amen. Hey, it'll overflow in your heart onto your family. It'll overflow in your family, amen, uh, into the church. It'll overflow from the church in, into the whole uh, town abroad. And it said, what's going on here? Hey, it's green pastors, amen, because we're letting the living waters of the Word of God begin to flow through us and begin to water everything around us, amen, and it's turning from a dead, dried up desert, amen, into a fruitful place, amen, where the sheep can come and they can eat, amen, and there's plenty of fruit to go around. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, that's what God wants to do. I, it blesses my heart, amen, to hear of children in this church to say, hey, I want to be a preacher one day, amen. Hey, just get in the Word, keep praying, keep reading that Word, keep getting closer to God, amen. Hey, and God will take something as insignificant as us, as insignificant as a place, amen, out here in the middle of the desert, and He'll begin to water it, He'll begin to put His hand on it, and brother, let me tell you something little as much, when God is in it, amen. They'll you know, stand before God one day saying, hey, you know, all it was is really I just, I understand what's truth and what's error. I chose truth. I see what was God and what was the devil. I chose God. I said, hey, I know that I have this power working in me that is able to do, sitting abundantly above all I ask or think. And I just let God start using it. It really is that simple, amen. Praise the Lord. That's good preaching. In John 17, 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that uh, they also might be sanctified through the truth. Amen. Have not I written unto thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge? Proverbs says that thou mayest know the certainty of the words of truth, and that thou mayest answer the words of truth unto them that send me. Proverbs 119, Psalms 119.30 I have chosen the way of truth, and thy judgments have I laid before me. Uh, Proverbs 23.23 23, 
That's easy to remember. 23, 23. It says, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Hey, you know what they're saying? Hey, just choose the way of truth. Just set the judgments of God before you. Just fall in love with that book. Fall in love with the Savior. Amen. And just watch Him begin to repair and bless and mold everything on that potter's wheel in your life. Amen. Before it becomes a vessel of meat for the Master's own use. And say, Lord, it's been on the potter's wheel for a while. Here it is, Lord. I pray that you'd paint it and that you'd just bake it. Make it solid. Amen. And fill it up, Lord God. Fill it up. Here you go, Lord. Here, here am I, Lord. Send me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Back to our text, and I think I think we'll be done. Amen. I think we've preached enough here today. But there's a lot of other uh, verses. Maybe we'll go to one more. But many false prophets have come, shall rise and deceive many. Matthew 24, 11. Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets which come in with sheep's clothing, and inwardly they are raveling wolves. Um, 2 Peter chapter 2 it goes on goes on and says but there were also false prophets among the people even as there shall also be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them amen and bring to themselves swift destruction it goes on and goes on and goes on amen in uh, 1 Timothy 4 1 it says the spirit speaketh especially that in the last days um uh Spirit speaketh especially that I say I charge you therefore before no back to first Timothy. There we go. The Spirit speaketh especially that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Amen. So instead of speaking the truth and love today. You got people giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Why? Because they can't tell the difference between the spirit of God and the spirit of Antichrist. They don't really know the difference between uh, a real preacher and a sheep, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Amen. You got to know this book to be able to know what you're looking at and what you're dealing with. Amen. Uh, so all I want to accomplish here really today is to say this. There are great treasures and great power accessible to you from the Word of God. And I encourage you today to fall in love with this book like you never have before and come before the Lord and say, Lord, I want to be able to know the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Amen? Everything else will fall into place at that point. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll be this message. Lord God, I thank you so much for your Word. Father, you've been so good to us. Thank you again, Lord, for blessing your preaching. I pray, Lord God, I pray, Lord, that you'd bless your people. Uh, Lord, that that book would come alive to them. Lord, that they'd believe that King James Bible, Lord, and know that you've put your hand on it. Lord, I love you, Lord, I praise you. I pray, Lord, that you'd have fruit, that you'd uh, have increase, Lord, in what you've invested in. Uh, Lord, because you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.